To be or not to be? Well, I think the not to be part should just be eradicated altogether. To be, most certainly. I guess the rest of the story is how. Joining us this morning to discuss this is Shegun Akabashoro, who is uh, the chairman and chief promoter of Zeta Power Limited. He's with us right here in the studio. Thanks for joining us. This Thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, perhaps there is some, a need for some kinds of clarifications about CNG. Well, the attempt there by the two gentlemen who spoke last tend to kind of give some inkling. First, the fact that we can control, locally control the price of CNG and all of that. Maybe you want to give us a quick background on that. First of all. Yes, absolutely. Because um, compressed natural gas is something we have in abundance. And over the decades, we've been flaring it away. I mean, this is, that is burning it away because we are not actually harnessed it for, for use. We have not harnessed them for use. So eventually, we are being forced at this point in time that um, the price of petrol or we should like to say liquid fuel, that is petrol and diesel, is not sustainable. It's um, so volatile and it's becoming ab uh, above the means of the average Nigerians. And not just the average Nigerians, the, the cost of production for manufacturers, everything that is being done is energy. Uh, so there has to be a turning point where we have to look for cheaper, better, and re reliable source of energy because <clears throat> For humanity, from all time in memorial, our sustainability as a species and our advancement has been based on how we get energy, especially energy that is cheaper and better for the environment, better for us and the environment at large. So eventually, we've been moving from stages from coal to this fossil fuel, and now we're talking about CNG, which is... Uh, uh, more of gas, not a liquid fuel, it's gas, and it's cleaner, it's better for the combustion, uh, it's friendlier to the environment and eventually to us. And uh, fortunately for us in this part of the world, in Nigeria, we have it in abundance. We are one of the largest depository in the world, and of course the largest in Africa. Yeah. And uh, so we, 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 we have no choice at this point but to move to better energy. And if you see the initiative of the president, I think it's a wonderful initiative. It is, I mean, we are at the catch-22 that we must transit because the cost, the, 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 the issue of the dollar, that so, so many Naira is chasing the dollar, and importation of fuel, refined fuel, is one of the major issues. And so this is a situation where we don't have to have refined product like one of your I think it was Okbe that was referring to that, that is locally produced. Yes. So you don't have to have a foreign exchange in that aspect to buy or to sustain the availability of such um, fuel. Well, at least uh, one fact is known to us, even though, as you said earlier, before we came on, uh, the idea of CNG has been on since the 1800s. Yes. Uh, well, Nigeria's um, knowledge of it also dates back into the 70s and 80s. But initiatives of government didn't start until the early 2000s. And even then, not much has really been, been done, except for the recent developments since actually 2020 in the wake of COVID when the government was, uh, you know, had begun to talk about some things. But the challenges that, uh, pre, that, that could prevent it are unlimited. Infrastructure deficiency, high cost, uh, public awareness, is one of those uh, issues, policy and regulatory issues, safety concerns, and all of those things. Which challenge would you say takes the cake that needs to be addressed seriously and holistically before this thing can really get off the ground in Nigeria? Well, I would love to, I would have preferred to say all of the above that you mentioned is actually, I mean, they are all in one. Mm. Uh, but the most daunting of all those challenges you highlighted is the Finance, um, because to have the infrastructure on ground, it's going to cost. That's the initial investment that actually we need to overcome starting it because it's quite expensive. Uh, ordinarily, um, gas value chain is far more expensive than what you have with liquid fuel like petrol and diesel. Um, the infrastructure you have to put on ground is, is no man's uh, play. I mean, you're looking at to have just two nozzle dispensers, it's going to cost you almost half a million dollars to have them on ground because you have to first 
secure a production that this is what you need have it brought to nigeria installed then you need the overhead storage system the tanks gasket tanks that now supplies compressors so all of those things takes time and it's quite expensive to bring them in and install but it's not it's something that can be done it can be overcome yeah. and i've always said that it's we we are at a point where we need this transition yeah. it is better it is reliable and it is cheaper. What will it take? Better for the economy. What will it take and how long will it take for Nigeria to get to at least some fairly safe um, space in the concern? Ex exactly. Area? So we're saying that out of the pool of 100% of where we are today, yeah. that we're going to take a chunk, maybe 25% transition over a period of time. Now, it has to be well planned. And I think the, um, the members of uh, initiative and also the government policymakers have taken this into consideration. However, what I would suggest is that there is what you call the low hanging fruit, the things we can do immediately that would not take so much time. Because in order for you to have all of those petrol dispensing stations, like the government said that you should must have, they want every petrol station to have a dispensing station for gas. It's quite expensive and they will need financing. And then that may not come immediately. So, so as you are now converting vehicles, mm. the rate at which your conversion is going on, you must also have availability of stations for them to go and refill their tanks or else they lose confidence in the availability. So those things have to move simultaneously together. So you said 25% <clears throat> over how many years? Maybe over the next three years. I mean, it's not something we need to really take so much as the average transport vehicle. That's why I want to bring this uh, into, into cognizance. You see, the cost of production for manufacturers, transportation of goods, I think those are the areas of low hanging fruits, generating sets, conversion of every diesel engine that powers companies, institutions, every area of production. These are areas where these are the low hanging fruits that can be done. Those conversions can immediately be done. Because they are not dependent, <clears throat> excuse me, on other scenarios. That is, if you're going to have gas, that the vehicles are going to, let's say I'm converting 5,000 vehicles in Lagos for gas. Yeah. They have to be a radius of which where they have to travel to refill their petrol tanks. And they have to have articulated vehicles to bring this gas from the mother tank <clears throat> all the way to the petrol station mm -hmm. regularly. So all of these things takes timing. And now for the investor, who is not going to say, I'm going to invest money, I'm going to borrow money to build this infrastructure so that vehicles can come to my station and buy petrol. They will have to have a guarantee of vehicles that would buy their product. Mm -hmm. They have to have a, a, a minimum number of liters that they will have to sell a day in order to make their returns on their investment. Mm -hmm. so, so, so these are what the fears of the average investors are well the mm. av average the fears of the average investor is one mm. the fears of the people is another the safety concerns are humongous particularly in the light of the recent occurrence i'm sure you're aware of it where some cng vehicles exploded for one reason or the other and as far as people are concerned it is a cng vehicle that exploded irrespective of what the circumstances are how can you allay these fears? I can tell you for free that CNG vehicles are actually very safe. I mean, we have explosions with petrol vehicle cars and they have reasons. So the reports need to come out to tell us exactly what transpired. It's not to do with the eating system, not to know. These gas tanks are well constructed to take pressures of, over, of about 300 bars, which is the measurement of pressure. And you don't feel it for, when you fill these tanks, you don't do more than 250 bars of pressure so it's quite safe and they have safety mechanisms on them to make sure that such things do not occur so for any reason that a cng vehicle exploded i mean i'm not sure if that's called an explosion or it caught fire or there is a ma so we need um, a, a report on exactly what happened but in cng in nigeria cng has been used it's being used in europe i mean in spain italy they are using it they have a sizable number even in india and Brazil, they have a sizable number of cars that have been on CNG for years, and there has not been one incident of explosion. So if we take the Nigerian factor and put it into it, maybe that is what had occurred. But I want to dissuade that fear that that is much, that's actually untrue, that CNG vehicles 
are prone to explosion. No, they are not. It has never occurred anywhere outside of Nigeria. So what occurred in Nigeria needs to be investigated and put in line with exactly what happened. What do you think occurred? I, I, I think there's a factor that people, I mean, that's where you need technicians. That's why I listened to one of the, I think it was Minister Uhuru, who was talking about the safety issues, that we have to have regulations. Who installs these things? They have to be satisfied. What kind of equipment, standardized equipment, are they using? It has to be standardized. So the regulation is important. So there's training and certification for vehicle owners to say that, yes, it is certified that regulated people installed, regulated products were also installed, and within a time frame that is required, that you must take your vehicle back for recertification within a period of time. There's a period for those time to assuage those possibilities of incidents that will occur on CNG vehicles. Mm -hmm. So that is why we need the regulatory body to call, come together. And like he was saying that once you have your tank fitted, your vehicle registration, the, the, the owner of the vehicle, they, they, will be, they will be in touch with you to make sure that there is no excuse for you to go beyond the time frame for a certification. And in getting the certification, they will check the tanks, checks all of the needed requirements. So this has been working seamlessly all over the world many parts of the world, never with this kind of incident. So we have to be very careful with the Nigerian factor and the switch that this has not occurred anywhere else like that. So okay. it's, I, I, I'm, it's, it's pretty... Are, are you satisfied <clears throat> with the regulations that government put in? Yes, I've been, we've had a series of meetings. I mean, I've been privileged to be in one of such meetings and Ulua Gwemi, who is the chairman of PSCNG initiative, um, they've been really trying to get everybody on ground to have that regulation in place. I mean, I think they had promised sometime in um, April or March that we will have a comprehensive regulatory system in which makes sure that the training, the kind of equipment they're going to use, the standardization, is all going to be comprehensive. And they've been bringing everybody, all stakeholders on board. Like, let's discuss this so that we can cross the T's and the dots to make sure that there's no lapses. Because one incident, or one bad incident is enough, like you, like you just suggested, that an explosion of a CNG vehicle gives its bad, it's a bad taste, very, very bad taste. And it, 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 it gives people the impression that it's not safe. Mm. And actually it is safe, it's just that we need to follow the regulatory procedure of how these things is being done successfully elsewhere. What kinds of um, government infrastructure are you looking at, for instance, um, I'm talking about soft infrastructure. The federal government has, you know, this initiative out and some kind of policy and the steering committee is working on it, just as you have mentioned. But then what role do you think states have to ensure that these things are... A huge role. With? A huge role. You see, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so happy when the federal government came out with this policy that they want all MDAs to have combustion processes for their vehicles and also to think futuristically that the future cars you're going to be um, 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 secure acquiring will be CNG vehicles. It's a wonderful initiative. Now, being a federal government initiative, it behoves on them to be the test pilot for the citizenry and the general public, because this is a federal government initiative. So federal government itself should say, listen, we are initiating this program and we have tested as pilot for others to come and join in. Come and have a look at what we are doing. Some of our vehicles, let's say a sizable percentage within the pool of the ministries, vehicles of all these MDAs, and you say, let's say by the end of this year, let's have 20%. 20% of those vehicles converted, or your utility vehicles, your eloxes, your construction vehicles, let's have all of them converted. So government, I mean, including state governments, will take up that initiative and tell their ministries that, listen, in each of these ministries, I need 10, 10 percent of your vehicles converted. So it's a test pilot. We can now tell the public that we have tried this. It's been certification, regulation, everything works because it's within a limited group of people that is government agencies. We will now, the success of that will now push them to invite private sectors, the institution, the banks, the industries, the insurance, all of these people that, listen, coming. You need to buy into this. We have done this. We have a conversion center. 
we have a dispensing station. We've been dispensing this for the past year or six months. No incident, it is safe and it is good for our vehicle. These are the savings on returns on our investment that we have seen, that government can now showcase like a, a public clinic and invite everybody and say, this is how it is done. So you can take from us and start getting the private industries or private people involved in this process. So it's a wonderful ideology, I mean, idea from government to say, let us start with ourselves as examples, as a test pilot that people are always apprehensive that is this going to work? Does this make sense? Is this profitable? Is this going to be uh, 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 a better thing for Nigeria? It is a wonderful idea. It's actually going to take Nigeria to the next level, to the real next level. It's a revolution, and we need to do that. You know, um, some people will be wondering, every time we've talk, spoken about CNG, we've only largely spoken about vehicles, spoken about cars, spoken exactly. about trucks and all of that. And maybe in some little instances talked about uh, manufacturers and all of those things. Is that all that CNGs are useful for? No, CNG, you see, funny enough, CNG, we've been using about maybe one percent of the capacity we have in Nigeria that certain industries, petrochemicals have been using. Even the Jenkos fire their turbines with these gases. So there's limited use of it. It's available and people are using it. Like for instance, our company have been installing, converting heavy duty generators to gas for a long time, for the past almost 14 years now. Where there are many industries, we've done it. So it works. So they are generating sets, companies, and this I said, these are the low hanging fruits. Okay. Companies, because the cost of operation, you find out oh, businesses are folding up and all these other reasons, is because the cost of energy is so high. Okay. And that is what any Western or developed countries always go after. Cheaper, better, reliable energy, because it's the driving force of advancement and development. I was actually wondering whether or not it's going to be useful for domestic use as well. Oh, don't, answer, oh, don't answer that one yet. Yes, <laughs> Chamberlain okay. wants to ask you a question. <laughs> go ahead, Chamberlain. And good to see you again. Well, actually, you know, the thing about the CNG is that uh, we, people need to just go be sure, check the safety measures, and show that you put certain things in place because they have actually, or there are cases, if you just check, you see uh, one of the most recent ones was in uh, Los Angeles where uh, there was a tank. Uh, it was it exploded, actually. It was exposed to fire, and the tank was, because it was pressurized, so I think they said it was about 3,000 PSI, so... There are different circumstances under which that explosion can happen. So people need to just keep checking to be sure they don't take things for granted. So uh, let me ask you, you talk about government leading by example. And so talk to us about some of the policies that they've announced. For instance, I know the president did announce that, look, vehicles from the government, MDAs, you have to go CNG. So those kinds of announcements and those kind of policies, how significant are they? Because you also have complained about how they need to make sure those policies actually achieve to ensure that CNG is here for good. I mean, first and foremost, um, I think the explosion you are discussing or you narrated was uh, LPG, liquefied propane or butane gas that exploded. Well, that wasn't CNG. No, um, no, CNG is CNG. gas, and the other no, no, it, LPG, it CNG. butane, it, it is, I mean, that's confirmed. Well, I would have to... Um, yeah, it's um, CNG. I will read Just check it, you'll see it. However, yeah. um, with the policy of government, I, I support it completely. And I think it is high time that we have to go this route, in which if there is no push, uh, we are going to be talking about CNG forever. And, you know, uh, the government itself has a need... To, to have a paradigm shift in the way things are done, especially, like I've said, many Western and developed nations all over the world have gone out of their way to seek for energy. The exploration we have in Nigeria, oil and gas, are mostly from multinationals that are foreign. And so this is, they don't take, they don't, it's a very, very important aspect of governance in order which helps your standard of living. So the cheaper your energy, either for the individual or the company, matters a lot. So what government has done is telling Nigerians that we have to start a system by which we have to have cheaper, better 
and reliable energy in this country, especially when we have it in abundance. And there's no excuse that we should not jump on this immediately. So it makes a lot of sense, like I said earlier, that the government agencies should be a test pilot for the rest of the nation, for the rest of the country and the community of countries in Nigeria, that this has to work. We have started that example and it can work. So a test pilot in any, um, in any uh, innovative uh, initiation is a proof of concept that this concept works. So government is rightly saying this is the best, the right thing to do that we have to be the example for the nation. It is possible, it can be done, but it just has to be detailed and planned and uh, 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 clear to all. Because investors need to know that the government are serious about that. That's where the lukewarm attitude and uh, 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 invest, investors are always afraid of that. Is this just a government policy? Is this just something that uh, we're just going to one step forward and two steps back? But when government itself takes those steps, then they are convinced that this is not only the thinking of government, this is the future of what this government wants. Uh, just so we can you know, talk a little bit more about its rollout in itself. I mean, there's a lot that's been said about CNG. Cheaper, safer, better, needs more heat to combust. Even with all of these, these incidents around the world, there's a lot of write-up about how much safer it is. You know, your petrol car would also uh, explode in, in that sort of high-tension uh, situation, but it would take longer if you have CNG. We've seen all of these research. But I want to talk about the benefits to the Nigerian people. So uh, we're talking about $18.3 billion annually. Uh, and of course, uh, man hours, 266 million man hours if we're able to do this rollout. What do you think is the holdup? Why do you think this hasn't been done all this while? And in what ways can we hasten it? Because, you know, the, the education is here now. And with everything going on, everyone, at least everyone that I know, is thinking about trying to, you know, let's explore cheaper energy. Let's try See, we can use it even for domestic use. Are there uh, conversations in that direction? And when do you, you know, when would you hope that the actual rollout, especially in places like Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Abuja, would happen in full, in, in full, so we can reap the benefits of this energy? Thank you very much. I mean, on the average, I can just tell you off the board that the cost of what you're spending now, if you convert to CNG, from 100%, you'll be saving 60 to 70% of your daily cost on the average liter of petrol. So if you're buying petrol at 620 Naira, or let's say roughly 600 Naira, and you're buying CNG equivalent of the same liter at 200 Naira, you are saving 400 Naira on every liter you are buying or using. So the more you use, the more, the bigger your savings. So the return on your savings is humongous. It's the initial investment that requires government intervention and I mean availability of financing, especially the, the single digit um, 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 rates of, um, um, of, of repayment. So it's for the Nigerian, for the average Nigerian, this is a win-win. We have to go through the process of what you call the, um, the aching or the arching process in which eventually when this becomes, becomes, I mean, the savings is humongous. I mean, for the average Nigerians, who is going to work, who is using his uh, 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 cooking gas, because CNG is also can be used as a cooking gas. We've not talked about that. How much will I save? Oh, you are saving 60, 70% easily, averagely. So you are, if you're buying a tank of 12 kg at 200 naira per kg, you're spending 2,400 naira to fill your 12 kg tank. As Imagine to, that, as opposed to a thousand or more, a thousand, 1,100 Naira. Can I get it now? So <laughs> where, where you're trying to convert. I like the enthusiasm. And this is where, this is where the low-hanging fruits, I mean, real estates, new estates, whatever that are coming up, these are things that they can uh, uh, put into their structures, not only for the cooking gas, for their generating sets. So they are now saving money. Yeah, we have more money in your pocket. So is, manufacturers, as you said, the the initial cost is humongous. It is, it is, and this is where government intervention needs to come in. That listen, central bank needs to sit down with financial institutions that are bringing and say, listen, how do we give these people single digit rates mm. and a longer term? 
Okay. Well, I guess it's a, it's, a, it's a continuation of the conversation. The awareness has to increase and so that people can be able to themselves embrace it. And not just in urban Nigeria, but even in rural areas oh, yes. as well, because it's a lot cheaper, as you have said. We have to thank you this morning, you, Mr. Shegun Akabashi, Chairman and Chief Promoter, Zeta Power Limited. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you for having me. This morning. Thank you.